Hey y'all, it's Lucy again with our Make a Castle Challenge. Um, my castle hasn't progressed too far, sort of. I mean, I'm working on it. But tonight I wanted to talk about what I think the defining feature of a castle is, and that's the turrets and towers. And when I first tried to make it, these were a real challenge, but I came up with a good way to make them. So I have all sorts of uh, prototypes. I think I can pick them up kind of to give you an idea. Prototype, prototype, prototype. And I'm just waiting a few minutes. Let's see. Oh, Janet from Spokane. And my friend Emily, who's quite an you know impressive designer herself, are waiting. So Janet is on the other side of the country. I, I, um, I'm just stalling for a minute. I went to Washington. I rode my bike across Washington in 2016. I went on a bike trail called the Sierra Cascades, and Washington State is so beautiful. It is an amazing state and a hard state to ride across. It is like uh, 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 bumpy. Okay, my friend Cheryl is here. And Jackie from A Cottage in the Forest is here as well. Jackie is also an incredible designer. She has made two patterns kind of for this challenge, for the Make a, um, the Make a Castle Challenge. She's made, um, I think it's called Villa Torre. It's beautiful. And the other one is a castle, very interesting castle called Hyorn Castle. I think, I, I don't know how to say it. That's the way it looks. And it's on her website, a cottage in the forest. So if you want to check that out. And let me see. I wonder, Margo. Margo from Arizona. So I wonder if she's gotten a little snow. Um, I think they had some snow recently. Or at least somebody I follow on Instagram had some snow. We don't have any snow. We've had days and days and days of rain. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'll try to be, um, you know, I'll, I'll try to be real clear about what I'm saying. So when I saw this design, this is based on a castle or a, a chateau, which means castle in French, um, from Escape to the Chateau. It was a British TV show, and I, I was kind of late to the game. I finally, I saw it this year, and I just fell in love with it, and the shape of the building and sort of the majesty of the buildings. That's what I fell in love with, and that's why I wanted to do this challenge. But one of the features were the circular turrets on each side, and I'm like, I wonder how you make those, because it's hard. I mean, you can curl up cardboard or cardstock into a circle, but it's hard to make consistent circular or tubular structures. So I experimented and experimented and experimented, and I finally came up with a way. So, what I found is my cat is getting into my tea glass. That's, so, I, I'm sorry. He distracted me. So, what I came up with is to make a, um, a template. So, I, when I designed this pattern, the diameter, the diameter of the turret is 1.25 inches. So, um... I made a template. I just curled up a toilet paper roll so that it's just under 1.25. It doesn't really matter. And and then I'm going to curl my paper around it. Well, if you do paper or cardstock that's dry, it doesn't want to curl. I mean, it's sort of hard, but I decided I'd spray it and that would help it conform to this circular pattern. So I am going to move my computer out of the way and use the overhead camera, I hope, I hope. Let's see. Is it live? Sometimes it seems to work and sometimes it doesn't. I have to stand up just a second. Oh, shoot. Camera. I don't understand camera. There. There we are. Okay, so I'm going to move my computer out of the way. and We'll, we'll use the I, iPhone camera, the overhead camera, 
and I'm going to show you how to do this. I hope. All right, so this is one of my templates, and you can see it's about, wait, I'm going to lower this too. So you can see it is about, it's actually a little over one and a quarter inches. This was my first one, I think. My first, it's a toilet paper roll, and it is one point, just under 1.25. And then this one, so here, let's get one. So this is a roll. This was actually, this, is a, this was a paper towel roll. Let's just curl it up. You can spray this too, but I don't think it's necessary. So I'll kind of curl it up. Fa painter's tape, one of my favorite tools. Okay, so I'm making it, just trying to make it just under, so this is so one, one inch and just a quarter. I'm going to tape it. And this is for round turrets. I'll show you how to do other turrets. Some other things are turrets or towers that that work as well. So right now, I'm just showing you round turrets. Oh, Kathy from Walla Walla is here. She has been, I think, at all of them. So, let's see. It's just over, yep, looks like it's about one and a quarter. Let me see, I've got a ruler here. We can actually measure with a ruler. Let's see, yep, right at one and a quarter. And it's not perfectly round. So now let's get some paper and I'm gonna show you how well card, how cardboard works. Actually, I don't have a paper one. Ben, can you look in that in one of those two boxes for a card stock that looks like this? Looks like this shape. Okay. Whoops. Okay. Now we're a little crooked. There we go. Okay. So this is what I was amazed at. So I've got my squirter here. And with the cardstock, you don't have to get it soaking wet, but get it a little bit wet. I mean, cardboard. Cardstock, you don't have to get wet. I mean, hardly wet at all. And then immediately you see how well it folds. I mean, it's almost like leather. It, it bends so beautifully. So that's really the trick. So here's my new template, and it's important to line it up. You want a, a very flat bottom, so line it up at the bottom, and then you tape it. And the tape doesn't work great with the wet cardboard, but it does work some. And then... There may not be one. You just not find any one. Okay. You tape it. And then I tape a piece around. So that really the tape is sticking to itself. Okay. So then you can let it dry naturally. But this is my do not try this at home trick. I turn on my oven, just turn it on, doesn't matter what the temperature is because you're only going to leave it on for three minutes and it's not going to preheat. I set the timer for three minutes and I put my little wet cardboard in the oven for three minutes. Remember, don't try this at home even though it works. And then the other thing I have to do because I uh, tend to get distracted and run around and do other things. I put a piece of tape on the on the stove where you can't turn it on without saying, what is that piece of tape here for? And that way I won't burn up my um, 
my little cardboard roll that's in the oven. You can see I sort of forgot about this one and it got a little scorched. And then you let it dry and then it is so much easier to, to make it into a tower. So the other thing I've done, this is in my pattern and I, I tried to think of other ways to do it, but I, I made this template so that this shows you how it fits on the corner. So you can see, and it helps it uh, helps reinforce the turret so that it fits on the corner. And I made these out of cardboard, and I glued several together so that it's nice and thick. Let's see. So on the bottom of all of mine, I've got this template, and that really helps it adhere so much nicer. Now the other thing is. I meant to have one. It's the one. Let me show you what I did wrong on this one. I only tell you what I did wrong so you can avoid it. You can see how it scorched it a little. I was I was distracted. But um did, did somebody have a question for me? The video has frozen. Oh. Okay. I'm fixing it, don't worry. Okay, is it back? Are you there? So I'm showing you one that I made earlier today so I can show you how to glue this to the template. This is one of my rounded turrets and I'll show you what I did wrong. And I will try to pay attention on my phone so it won't freeze. It worked so well the first time and then it just quit doing it, but I will solve the problem before next time. Next time we're going to talk more about the steeples, because they can be a challenge too. And you can use exactly the same method to make a steeple out of cardboard, but it also works with cardstock. Um, 65 pound cardstock will curve into, um, into a tower pretty easily. But um, 110, I just, just do a real light spritzing of water and, it cur and curl it around your template. Okay. That's my stomach. I hope you can't hear it. My pile of trashy tape. Okay. When I curled this one, I didn't line up the bottom, and so it's kind of crooked, which may make it a little harder to glue it to the template. We'll see. Okay, well, let's see. So this is the messy part. I forgot my, I usually um, bring like a, a wipe or a washcloth or something, paper towel, wet paper towel, because this is where I get glue on myself. And then I just kind of glue around my little template. If you wait a minute, the glue gets, and this is barely art glue. Uh, I've got my Turbo Tacky glue, but I just kind of automatically picked up the Barely Art glue. And then I always try to make sure I'm going to fold this in. Maybe. And I just try to get one side at first and just let it hold. And then kind of ooch the other side in. And there we have it. Now, obviously, it's not going to stay. But you can put tape around it right now. And make sure it's okay if it's pushed in a little bit. But it's not okay if it is sticking out and, and your um, turret won't. Let's see, one of these I didn't do right. You see how it's sticking out a bit? So the turret's not exactly even. So I've got a nice support at the bottom, and then you do the same thing at the top. And um, you can put one in the middle too, but it's kind of hard to do that. And then let that dry, and it forms a really nice structure. This one I made kind of quickly, and like I said, I almost burned it up, so it, it's not as nice as these two. Okay, but now here's another cool thing. I wanted to have texture on my turret. So 
I wanted to see if cardboard, stenciled cardboard would work, and it works beautifully. I used grit paste for the stenciling. I think it's got a polymer in it, so it's a little bit flexible. I stenciled the cardboard when it was flat, so when it was a, um, a flat piece of cardboard, I stenciled it, and then I sprayed really only the inside, and it just makes a beautiful, beautiful turret. This one has been primed, almost ready to paint. In my pattern, I've got a stencil pattern that you can cut out with your Cricut, or you can use other stencil patterns. But um, I didn't have it cut out when I made this one. So this is my stone pattern, and the other one's more, it's more like a um, block pattern, the one in the file at Paper Glitter Glue. But I just think it's going to make, I just can't wait to paint these. And then here are my beautiful, these are my little, um, turret, the turret toppers, the steeples out of cardboard, and they're so nice and sturdy. Like I said, we'll talk about them next time, but I just think they look so good on my little, my little um, tower. Now, the other thing is, this is kind of a pain. The house that I base this on required um, circular turrets, I thought, but they are kind of a pain. It makes much more sense, especially when you're starting out, to do either a hexagon or a um, octagon. So, and they look; these towers look very good. Here's one sample. This was made out of cardstock, and sometimes when you're making your um, steeple, it it leaves a little gap. And so I thought, well, maybe I'll just I just put a toothpick in it and I made a flag. So I think that's going to look cute on one of my one of my castles. So next. I'm going to show you the really what I think the trick about the hexagon ones. This is six-sided, and that is even though your Cricut will score it with either the scoring wheel or the um, the scoring stylus, which is usually what I use. You, I think you really need sharp corners. Here's one I made out of cardboard. Yeah, so this is my six-sided one out of cardboard. So I always redo the score lines. You need good light when you do this. Put your ruler very near the edge, and then I use the back side, the non-sharp side of my craft knife, and it makes a beautiful score line that folds beautifully. I mean, I just love how well this scores. So hold down your, your steel ruler. And I listed all of these on the Make a Challenge, Make a Castle Challenge page. Just hate it when the cat hairs jump in the way. I shouldn't let cat hairs distract me, but they do. Okay, now score this. Oh, Emily asked, Ben just showed me a question. Emily asked about... Oh, shoot, it froze again. Just a second, I'll get back. There, we're back. I'm sorry. Emily asked about stencil materials. You know, I I haven't purchased stencil materials. I went, maybe I did one time, but um, my Cricut wouldn't cut it, or I had trouble getting it to cut. And then... One time I used cardboard, but I knew cardboard, once stencil um, material, the grit paste was on it, that it would get soft. So I pre-painted it with some um, gesso. So I primed it so my cardboard was a little stronger. And that worked. But then I found some Yupo paper. I'm like, well, that's it's a synthetic paper, so I thought it would work. So Yupo paper worked. And then the other thing was... I use my mat protector, uh, the cutting mats that crickets come with. I use that mat protector. The, the kind of easy way, or rather the most precise way to fold along score lines is, I think, fold it towards yourself and then away. So you get the fold started, and then you fold away. There I hear. And... It's a nice sharp crease, and it's especially important when you have things like windows, which kind of uh, weaken that part of the structure. So let's try not to, to bend it in the wrong place. So 
there. I'm gonna There, you can buy stencil material, and uh, I really need to do that. I think Jackie has talked about it before. Jackie has um, has made some good stencils, and she's talked about it. Okay, see how nice that looks. So you don't even need a template. I, I think I put a template in the pattern, but you don't need it, and it's just so easy. And it it makes these are really pretty. I think these are really pretty towers, and they look very good. Let's put them. This is one of my first prototypes. Oh, and the other thing is, because the uh, it's a hexagon, it's got flat sides. It fits easily alongside your castle. So joining your cat your tower to your castle is actually much simpler if you have a six or an eight sided um, six or an eight sided tower. That's, that was the other thing about the round tower. I had to figure out, well, how do we make it join up? And so that's why I came up with that little template with a circle with a little 90 degree angle cut out of it. There. And for my pattern, I just did the windows on three sides. So you can see that it fits nicely right next to the building. So it's easier to adhere. So if you're just starting out, I would start out with like a hex, hexagonal tower. Okay, the other thing is the turret tops, you know how we just scored these? Well, you need to do that with your tops too because these are actually, all these come to a point. So it really helps if you score them precisely with a craft knife. Does anybody have any questions? So... Um, about that, but I was just really happy that I figured out a way to and the, to make round turrets. But you know what? The truth is, there's always another way to do it. So, oh, and if you're cutting by hand, let me show you. I sprayed this cardboard. This was just a piece of cardboard. I sprayed and I really saturated pretty well. And I just kind of made sort of semicircle. I made the back flat, so you don't have to worry about cutting it out with a machine and then just adhere the flat back to your house. And you can decorate it with using like a hole punch, or I'll show you something I saw somebody do. They used single-face corrugated cardboard. I think Luca probably ate it. But just cut off a little piece of trim or use your hole punch and just punch a couple of holes in it, and it makes a... I makes a cool looking tower without having to have a cutting machine. Okay, so I think that's it. Like I said, I will solve the camera problem next time. And I hope that helps you with round turrets in particular, but turrets in general. So, Ben, are there any questions for me? No, not right now? Okay, so what I'll do is uh, when we're done, we'll make this a replay and... Um, so you can so for somebody who missed they can see it on a replay next week We're doing the tower tops. Hopefully I'll have my version finished my stone version finished and Check out Jackie's two patterns And I think I've got a couple other patterns that I can I'm going to modify some and I think they're going to look really good so Thank you for joining me on this week's episode of the Make a Castle Challenge, and I will see you next week. Okay, y'all take care. Bye.